and thanks for joining us today on iHeart Art. I'm Madeline Culp and I'm delighted to be your artist guiding you through the done art that we're gonna draw today. So I do ink on paper drawings and today I've chosen three different types of pens to draw this marsupial mouse. Um, I've got a very, 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 very fine one. Finest I've ever gone on in the history of iHeart Art. A zero, zero, a zero 0.03 pen. Then I'm also doing a 0 04 and then a really thick 1.2. Um, the reason I'm doing this combination is that we're drawing fur. So I want to make sure I can get some details and that's why I'm going so fine. And the thick will be for colouring in those really black bits and the outline as well. So if you're following along at home, you just need a clean white piece of paper, some pens. You can even use a ballpoint pen if you don't have these art line style uh, felt pens. Um, the trick if you're using a ballpoint pen is to play with the pressure and the strokes. So um, if you push harder or lighter, you can really change the vibe and intention of your drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so, to speed things along, I've already started my done art. I really was inspired by all the photos I could find of them online and they always look like they're being papped um, or caught by the paparazzi. So I really wanted to play with that in um, the final design that I chose. I've never done it before. Could be a disaster, but we're in this together, right? Um, this one, uh, the done art's got his mouth open in shock and horror, like it's coming out of a nightclub and it didn't want you to know about it. Um, so that's why I've started it already. I'm gonna start with the mouth to begin with. Um, I've kind of just done a rough outline of where I want it. I'm gonna go with the really thick pen and um, commit to it a little bit more. Drawing this way with no draft is uh, one way of really committing to things. So we're gonna just really make that bold choice to color in. This is kind of like the gum area of the mouth of the done art being in absolute shock. <laughs> oh. And then um, we're gonna do the top of the mouth. It's almost a bit like cat-like, the top. This kind of goes around like this. I mean, the reference photos I've got up here, they're all pretty cute with the mouth shut. They look very sweet. I'm gonna make that more distinctive. And then we're gonna go around the nose. So for the nose, there was kind of a little bit of a split in the middle. So that's why I'm leaving a little bit of the white to poke through. And then of course the nostrils, I wanna make that pretty different. So I've decided to leave them as white as well. I'm gonna color these in with this really thick pen. And then I'm gonna use a thick pen to move on to the eyes. So the eyes are huge because they're nocturnal done arts. So I am gonna try and capture that by going over the first line I've made and making the eyes a little bit rounder. Then I wanna leave a space where sort of the reflectiveness of the camera has caught in the eyes. And it also will just allow us to give a little bit of dimension and character to the eyes, which would otherwise just be pure, thick, black, filled in circles. <laughs> so it kind of gives it a little bit more perspective. And then I'm going to do the same. And on this side, I noticed that there was like two sort of reflecting circles and that because of the way the done art was looking at the camera, it's a little bit of a different shape. So I'm going with a bit more of a almond oval shape and I'm just gonna color this in again. Pretty simple stuff to begin with. Apparently done arts will share their burrows with other mice, like just regular mice even when it's really cold. It's pretty cute huddling up in there together. All right, so we've got a bit of an idea of where we wanna go. 
with those sections filled in. What we're going to do now is concentrate on getting a little bit of the face fur and the whiskers. So I'm going to go really, really teeny for that and build it up if I need to. With the whiskers, I am going to actually start with small circles because I want to give that dimension to them, that they're not just like floating around. And kind of going to angle them out. And now I'm going to flick them. So this is really fine. <laughs> I think actually this could be too fine. What I might do is I might flick with one round and then I'm going to up the pen to the zero four and I'm going to go over those spaces again just so that the whiskers are a bit more pronounced. So with your hand you just want to make sure you're capturing the shape of the whiskers going down and with whiskers they're all different sizes so don't go too hard when you're pushing with the whiskers I would say kind of keep it light let's do quite a few because the whiskers are pretty pronounced and I'm trying to keep roughly <laughs> the um, space from the nose and the whiskers sort of similar all right look let's just leave that there for now we can come back to it now I'm going to move on to the other really prominent aspect of the done art the ears being um, nocturnal animals they are huge so I'm going to try and do a little bit of the inner ear and then fan it out because it does have this little bit of fur. So this is going to create that perception of that dimension of the ear. And then the ear seems to have a lot of tufts of hair coming out. So I'm going to just kind of keep all the hair starting in the one direction and going up. So we're going to have them roughly in a bit of a line and then in the inner ear there seems to be hair coming out so we're going to kind of do the direction a little bit different there. I mean I think this done art looks like a party party done art already. Looks like I would hang out with this done art if I was a done art. I reckon it would know where to go. I'm going to play with voids here and I'm going to kind of just block fill but I'm going to fill this in a kind of squiggly manner. <laughs> Is that a technical term? I don't know. I'm going to fill it so that there's a little bit of white coming through. So that gives it a bit of an idea that it's scruffier. And while I scruff this done art up, why don't you go on a little break and I'll meet you back here for more I Heart Art. Welcome back to I Heart Art, where we're drawing a done art today. Um, and we have just focused on the head. Now let's move on to the body. Um, fur is a, it's a sort of new territory for me, so I'm sort of experimenting. So please feel free to take this as much as you want or ditch it and go with your own style of fur. Done arts have that beautiful white belly and then speckles of darker fur through this lovely caramel color. So I'm gonna try and represent that with uh, playing with the shading and the texture. I've mapped out a little bit of the chest that I'm gonna leave blank for now and this may change. <laughs> I don't know, for now I'll leave it blank. And I'm gonna work on um, building in that texture and that color throughout the rest of the body. I'm going to use this um, three, yeah, no, four, oh four 04 pen, I lied, um, to kind of um, push hard and soft. And I'm gonna do a little technique for the border that I did with other drawings, um, the little tuft technique. So three or four lines all starting from the one spot and all fanning out. The reason I'm doing this closer to the border of the of the white <laughs> is that I want to make a little barrier of fluff. Um, and it's not like the Dunarts have really long fur. They've got that sort of mouse looking fur, but don't call them a mouse because they'll be probably offended. They're actually closer related to quolls. 
you can believe it. This is actually quite a quoll pose, isn't it? Quolls are quite sassy. Um, this little fella is also quite sassy, which I like. Who doesn't like a sassy done art? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go through here. Now, I'm gonna start breaking up the tufts and going a little lighter and a little shorter till I get closer to the middle when I'm gonna go as small and as light on these tufts as possible. Um, also gonna try and keep with that pattern how the white um, kind of covers the thigh. Um, so I'm gonna try and get that um, sense of um, curves of the thigh with this technique, hopefully to some success. <laughs> Maybe not. But you know, that's what drawing's all about, right? Just give it a go. If you don't like it, start a new one. And if you do like it, but you don't like all of it, you could always kind of trace over the bits you like and then at least you know you've got a nice little reference starting point. It's not cheating because it's your own work. So, all right, we're gonna keep doing this here for a little bit. And with the fur at the back, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of try and bring the viewer's eye down the back. So I'm going to do some lovely little S lines. I'm going to go thick and I'm going to go thin. I'm going to push hard and soft to try and break that up. The other way you could do it is if you do have a variety of pens, you can always just swap out the um, smaller nibbed pens. This is a technical term, I'm sure of it. Um, and that will give you that instant um, uh, differentiation in the lines. I also didn't want to do a straight um, outline because you know it is a fluffy animal so instead I am just squiggling some fur lines in the body. Like I've given myself a guide even though I said I don't do a draft. <laughs> <laughs> but I have so I'm just gonna play around with that and I really want to get almost like the movement of water I really want to get a lot of squiggles and curves and I don't want anything to be really straight at all even though a lot of the done arts fur in the face looks like it's quite straight I just want to really capture that essence of scraggly fluffiness so keep going with these lines down the back and I'm hoping that if I can do a few of these shorter lines kind of coming off the head area, it will kind of give us a sense that the head is actually switched back like a supermodel, doing a look over the shoulder and then if we build them up feels like I'm moving a lot more this <laughs> one then hopefully that's what we're kind of going for um, I don't want to play around with much more lines in the face area because I don't want to overcrowd the features for me the mouth the eyes the ears as the stars of that area but I thought we can kind of go a bit wild here and when we get to sort of this part of the tuft areas, I'm gonna start kind of playing with the direction of the tufts to again draw the eye back. Because this kind of elongates the leg, but then when we're going back down the body, um, I just wanna kind of move it a little bit. So Dunouts live in a lot of times Central Australia, Western Australia. So they live in the desert and I found out they don't need to drink. Yeah, they're super animals. Um, they just get their liquid from their prey, which is pretty amazing. So they don't actually need to worry about finding water, which is pretty amazing. So when you start changing directions with the fur, just kind of go easy at the beginning, mixing up the directions until you've kind of feel like you've 
got yourself into a little pattern. But I am gonna bring this back and up. So hopefully keeping the white bit to kind of do a little bit of a belly shape. <laughs> I like to go back and forth in my drawings, but you can like stay in one spot and work that spot till it's done. Whatever works for you, whatever's more fun. So we'll just keep working this back a bit. And because we did those um, whiskers really softly, it's kind of working fine to go over them like this. All right, well, I'm gonna keep doing this while we take a little break and come back and we'll do the tail. Thanks for watching I Heart Art. You're watching I Heart Art and I'm Madeline Culp and we're down to the pointy end of our done art. Let's do the tail. So, done art's tail are the same length or if not a little bit longer than their body. So that gives you a bit of an idea about the perspective we're gonna go. Um, I'm gonna keep it sort of thick at the top and I'm gonna narrow it down to a tip. Again, no draft, no pencil, it's bold, but we can do this, let's do it. All right, here we go. Gonna go up and I'm gonna have this done art's tail curved a little and up in the air because I just feel like you know, it would be throwing its tail up in the air in the club. And I feel like that's where it's come from. So I'm gonna get the thickness down. Um, and yeah, that seems okay. Uh, we'll go with that. We're gonna start now drawing in the details of the tail. So I'm also gonna continue that motif of like the creeping fur, but I don't wanna do it the whole way because um, I don't think the fur is really that noticeable if you're looking at the reference images on the tail. So the tail um, is actually a lot darker than the rest of the done art. So I am going to make a bold choice as is the theme for this drawing and I'm going to color it in as we get down further on the tail. So let's reverse engineer that and let's get our thickest pen, 1.2 liner and let's color it in oh my goodness here we go so i don't want to color the whole way because i just don't want that much of a block color on this drawing i think it's kind of nice to have a bit of a contrast because we have been really texture heavy but you know it's art so it's not like we have to draw every single fur or fluff or anything that we need to so let's take uh, those liberties and explore this a little bit Done arts are pretty small when they're fully grown, but I did learn that when they are babies, they are the size of a grain of rice when they're born. That's pretty amazing. And some done arts have only 11 day gestation period. So that is not a lot of time to wrap your head around being a done art parent. You really have to process that pretty quickly. Um, all right, kind of going around here. And this is where I'm gonna leave the block color, I think and we're gonna kind of break it up. So I'll do a little bit of the breaking up with the thicker one, just to sort of like have a bit of momentum and consistency. And then when I've done this a little bit, I'm gonna meet, meet this thicker one with the 0.4 and sort of continue it on. Now I'm just doing really close stroke. I feel like I'm doing more of a like pencil technique, like a shading technique almost here. Just really a lot of lines close to each other. And I just wanna give that texture feel. Don't be afraid to just stop what you're doing and walk away as well. I mean, I can't right now, but I'm um, pulling back to look at the bigger picture is always a good idea because sometimes you can get just hypnotized by all of these little tiny details and then you kind of lose sight of what you were kind of hoping to do. Um, and probably maybe having a plan would have helped me, but here we are. <laughs> 
So now we're meeting these longer pieces we did before and I'm gonna kind of match them and elongate them and I'm also going to try and drive in a little bit of an idea of a curve because that's going to work with the curve of the tail. So I don't want it to be too white because I do want to reflect that the Dunart's tail is mostly dark. So I think you're okay to go a little heavy handed here if you like. And then I want to also highlight that intersection of the tail meeting the body. I like to kind of draw out these intersections of the animal's bodies by um, just making something distinctive. In this case, I'm going to use color and I'm going to go dense on the fur so that it's kind of a little bit more of a joining area. And, and it kind of gives it a bit more of a feature. And like I said, if you want to kind of move your shape a little bit um, to step back from it and then go over the edges of where you want to move it and go from there. Like I kind of want to make this a little bit more round. So I'm just going to build it up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is go over the tail again on the outline to make it consistent with this really thick pen. Uh, I'm not going to go too hard up here because I kind of already done that, but I am going to Go down the tail, because apparently Dunarts store all of their fat in their tail. So it's a pretty important part and it can swell up and down depending on how many crickets they've eaten. They mostly eat insects, which would be a pretty hard thing to like hunt. Very fast moving. No wonder they've got those big eyes and ears. So yeah, just kind of making this as thick as I want and around the bends I kind of emphasize the thickness a little bit more as well because I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker there on top it's almost like the idea that the Dunart's flicking its tail towards the viewer as well so we'll go around here we'll join that up now I kind of want to go around everything with this thick pen and a little bit different to other drawings I've done in that I don't have a line for all the areas, but I want to make the outline of the animal. I like that really bold definition between the void of the white paper and the animal that I'm drawing. So I want to go over everything in the style that I've been doing. So I don't want to go too different. And then that way it just kind of pops off the page a bit more. Um, all right, so I'll just go over this a little bit more. So we're just bringing out that definition and definitely back here. Go over it. I've drawn some rocks in because they do live in those um, central parts. So I thought that might be nice to kind of show its habitat. I'm going to go really light on this part because this is the part that's white and I want it to be really different. So close to finishing. I can almost see it. Just a few more and I think a done art and the first done art I've ever done will be finished. Maybe it's your first done art or your 50th done art. <laughs> but it's a good way to end an art show with an animal that has art in its name. <laughs> I'll just do a little bit more here and I think we're done. Great. There you go, a paparazzi done art for you. Um, thank you so much for joining us here on iHeart Art. I've been Madeline Culp and thanks for drawing.